I first learned about these Dubrovnik chess sets in an article of Oklahoma Chess Monthly. I read about the rich history of the set. It was introduced in 1950 for the 9th Chess Olympiad. Only about 50 sets were made. But it became popular enough that they reissued a slightly different design to the general public, and Bobby Fischer actually owned two of these sets. Now for his 1992 rematch with Spassky, he specifically requested an original Dubrovnik set, and he said it was the best set that he ever played on. So I was a little intimidated about this project, but I had an idea to make a sort of duplicating jig that I thought would help make the pieces identical and speed things up. So I'd first make a piece that was dimensionally accurate, or at least I could live with, and then hold that piece in my tailstock that a follower would be able to reference as the cutter was making the cuts. And this cutter, of course, produced a terrible surface finish, so I went over everything by hand to clean it up. And then I made the bishops. I pretty much made all the pieces of this set using the same method. The duplicating, the hand finishing, and then sanding and parting. Now to get precise dimensions of all the pieces, I just found some straight on pictures on the internet and I know the king's bases are 1.5 inches and the height is 3.5 inches and then use that as a reference in a CAD program to get all the other dimensions. And actually you don't need a CAD program though, really. you can just do it manually. I glued in the ball top finials on the bishops. And next I did the rooks. So to do the crinal cuts in the top of the rooks, I had an idea to use the milling attachment and then make a fi holding fixture for the Dremel tool and then clamp the fixture in the vise of the milling attachment. So this would allow me to make five equally spaced cuts by also using the indexing flange of the headstock. Now, I put some tape on there because I thought maybe there would be some chip out. But without the tape I didn't have any problems either. So I learned this trick from a guy making chess pieces in India. So next I made the queen. And I made the cuts in the queen's crown using the same method as the rooks. And then I made the king. And now on to the knights. You go from all the simple round pieces to this most complicated shape. And having no wood carving skills, I thought, how am I supposed to carve such a complex shape? You know, these old retired guys take up wood carving and they spend years farting around carving ducks, beautiful ducks. So how am I supposed to 
make these knights in a reasonable amount of time and maintain the same quality that the rest of the pieces would hopefully have. And I'll admit that the learning curve was very steep. The first few nights I made were just terrible. Starting with that first one on the left there, I think I blacked out. The second one I remember going into a blind rage. The third one I thought was passable, and then as I made more, they slowly got better. And then I just repeated that same process for all the pieces. These are the bishop's ball top finials. I didn't have a scroll truck when I started this project, but eventually I broke down and bought one. This is the knight's pedestal. As I made more and more pieces, it was interesting to look at them all together as a set, since I've only seen pictures. And then I glued the knights to their pedestals. And then apply the finish using a waterlocks finish here. So this was after the waterlocks sealer was applied. And then using the Beal buffing system, this was after buffing with the Triple E wheel. And then this was after buffing with the white diamond. And this is after buffing with the wax. And the same process for the pieces. This was after the waterlock sealer. This was after buffing with the Triple E wheel. This is after the white diamond wheel. And then this is after buffing with the wax. And you'll notice that some of the compound is still in all the crevices of the pieces. I had to use a plastic brush to get that out of there. And then after putting felt on the bottom, here's the completed set. It's unweighted, just like the original. Just like Bobby Fisher liked it because he said it was good for traveling. And yes, I've already made a second Dubrovnik set with many improvements. Uh, I don't use the duplicating jig anymore. I think there's a much easier and faster way. I might make a video on it. <coughs> and here's a knight that I made from Bacote thinking about making a set of black pieces of Bacote, but it's pretty expensive. Thanks for watching.